Yo, what is up? Coming to you, not live, but kind of live in this moment because we're recording live, but now it's for you guys on the YouTubes. Hey, hope you guys are doing good. I'm not going to lie to you. It is so hot. I don't know how you guys feel, but it is just toasty in here. Um, is it toasty at your house? I don't know. Leave a comment. Let us know how hot it is where you're at. But it is stinking hot here. And you know what happens when you're hot? You get hungry. Actually, that's how I feel at all times. During the school year last year, uh, I would sometimes teep, teep, teach in chapels for Horizon Prep. Um, and every time that I taught, for the most part, I would talk about food. And I think it holds true to my character and who I am. I like to talk about food. And this week, I'm going crazy because I'm doing no sugar. And I didn't realize how much sugar I consume without actually realizing it. On beach day, right, we have one more beach day this Thursday, guys. If you haven't made it, come on. Let's go. They're amazing. We play volleyball, throw frisbee, just do tons of stuff. Super fun. Powerhouse Park, 12 o'clock Thursday. Be there. Uh, but one of the kids brought cookies, and I forgot I was doing no sugar, so I'm, like, stoked. Those M&M cookies you get at, like, Ralph's or Vaughn's or whatever. So everyone's, like, calling me over, Josh, they got cookies. I was like, yes. So I run over there. I was about to grab the chocolate chip. I was like, oh, no way, M&M cookies. So I grab one out of the bottom tray, and I'm like, yes. I take a bite, and then I'm like, no. And I realized I was doing no sugar, so had to spit it out, get rid of the cookie. Same with instant oatmeal, the maple brown sugar, that's the best flavor. Have a spoonful in my mouth, I'm starving, I'm like, yes. And then I was like, no, had to spit it out. Guys, no sugar is so hard, especially when it's hot, because all you want is like a Gatorade or, I don't know, soda or something. No sugar. And it's not, never the same. So just letting you guys know where I'm coming from. I'm hungry. And I haven't had sugar. But you know what's great? That the Lord speaks no matter in what condition we're in. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to dive into the word. Before we do that, I have a question for you. Right? What is the perfect candy? Been talking to the staff members. Been talking to some of you. Maybe not a ton of you, but what is the perfect candy? Not what is your favorite candy because Sour Patch Watermelon, I could eat all the time. But after a while, I'm done with it. What is the perfect candy? Get back to us. Let us know what you think. I really want to hear from you um, so I can try these candies after Thursday because that's a week of no sugar and let you know. So uh, think about that. But we're going to continue in the to-go series today. Uh, we're going to be winding this series down um, pretty soon here. It's been an awesome, fruitful series talking about going and doing God's ministry, going and doing God's work, grabbing that to-go burger. Uh, if you haven't heard from Aaron, uh, works in the children's or the, yeah, children's ministry. Uh, he did a recent burger review. Um, talk to him about it. Find out what he thinks. But grab that to-go burger, that one that you think is the best, and then do God's ministry. It's fast-paced. It's quick. Sometimes it's just rapid fire. Like, we're doing all this stuff really fast, really focused, really diving into God's word and just doing his work. But we've also, in this series, talked about how when we've gone and we've done it and we're going so fast that Jesus calls us to take a break, to rest, to be in his word, to be in his, in, in his presence, to be praying, to be thinking, all those things, uh, yeah, just so jam-packed. And this, this series has been absolutely fruitful. And so we're going to just continue in it. Maybe today or next week uh, we'll be winding down. But really pumped on today's content. We're going to be in Mark chapter 7, right? And I'll read that for you here in a second. But I want to let you guys know kind of where we're going to go with it. Mark chapter 7 talks about defilement from within. We're going to be talking about Witnessing being lights just in our daily lives, not even, not even just witnessing to them, just how we act. How sometimes we can feel entitled as Christians. 
how we feel like we have the answer and anyone else doesn't, not doing it like we're doing it is doing it wrong. And then we kind of bring an interesting perspective, kind of sometimes a negative outlook on what the Bible is calling us to do. And so really pumped on this, this, uh, this word today. We're going to be in Mark 7, verse 1 through 23. All right, it's going to be here. We're just going to get a few points out of it. And before we get into this word, let me pray for us. So, Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, even though it's hot, for breath in our lungs and for, for just a, a life knowing you, God. What a blessing. Lord, I pray for each person tuning in that they find fruit in this, that they get something new out of this. God, you, you reveal new things to us all the time. And I just praise you for that. And I just ask that you would just lead and direct and, God, that you would be glorified today. So thank you, God. Speak through me now. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, here we go. Let me read this for us. Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw him of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way. Holding the tradition of the elders, when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. Then the Pharisees, couches, then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things you do. He said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is Corban, that is a gift from God, or a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition which you have handed down, and many such things you do. When he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. When he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable, So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. And he said, What comes out of a man that defiles a man? For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, covetousness, Wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. All right. Few verses, but packed, right? Every time. It could be one verse. It could be a hundred verses. Man, the Lord teaches us something. So cool. So rad. But there's just a couple big points I want to bring out of this, right? I'm sure you could have guessed some of what I'm going to talk about. But one, we're going to talk about how we as Christians behave. I kind of alluded to that idea. We as believers behave when we're being lights and examples and living our lives, right? How we behave, how we're entitled sometimes. How are we being an example? And the other is what are we putting in our hearts? What does our heart look like? Uh, Because it's not about the old law. It's about the grace of the Lord. So. We're going to go ahead and just break this down. So let's jump back at verse 1. Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, 
that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding the tradition of the elders. I don't know about you guys, but I like to wash my hands before I eat. Right? It, in the old times, in the old law, it was all about the protecting of the people. Right? They weren't to eat pork. They weren't to eat these things because it wasn't safe. But then those things changed, right? The Lord permitted them to eat of it. But these Pharisees look back and say, we have to stick to this rigid tradition. We have to stick, rigid's kind of a harsh word. We have to stick to this tradition. We have to stick to this. Man, I like to translate that to us. I think when I've been in the church for a long time, right? You guys know my story. Grew up in a missionary family. Been in the church pretty much my whole life. I think when I get to a certain place in my headspace, right, when I'm thinking, I think I know what's best. The way I do church or the way I do Christianity or the way I do this is the perfect way or the best way to do it. I've had those thoughts before, right? As you grow and you change and you become uh, deeper in your walk with the Lord or in your life as, as, as a Christian, I think you become less less strict or you can become more strict but i think what happens is we get stuck in our way of living i would encourage you as believers in your walk to not negate or not neglect the true or neglect the fact that just because someone else right another christian or another person is doing something or has an understanding of Jesus in one way that you don't, that they're wrong, right? Now, if they are wrong, if it's unbiblical what they think, we help them get there. We help them by showing the word to them. We help them by living our life a certain way, but it doesn't mean we come down on them. Here, the Pharisees were so focused on the old tradition, so focused on the physical acts that they lose sight of it. Guys, I would encourage you, if you're a believer, how you respond to non-Christians, how you respond to new believers, how you respond to other people, man, it will affect their thought process. It will affect how they look at the church or look at Christians. It can. It's just the truth of of the matter. We should live our lives showing grace to people the same way that, that Jesus shows grace to us. They lost sight of the fact that it's the heart of the matter. Man, God is just so faithful and so focused on our hearts. And we're going to look into that some more. But as you go out there, as you witness, as you go do that work, do that ministry, whether it's a missions trip down the road or whether it's how you act or behave, um, remember that the Lord shapes our hearts and our minds through this. And when we learn something new about him, whether it's a new way to look at something we've always thought or or it affects our attitude, sometimes the Lord is showing other people the same thing, but it may take them longer. Maybe they don't they don't know yet. So don't look down on them or don't don't become so stringent on what you believe or know that you you call other Christians out. We're there to build each other up, edify one another, and you have to help brothers and sisters in Christ along. But the Lord speaks to them in different timing, in different ways. Does that make sense? I think so. I think that's what I've been looking at. I I would pray that I'm not like that. And I'm sure I have been, and I'm sure I get so tunnel-visioned, but my heart is to, to just constantly grow in the Lord. So, oh, also kind of crazy but I was reading some, like, uh, footnotes, and there's, like, this old way of eating that if they're not to have dirty hands, they would eat with, like, their knuckles. I don't know what that looks like, but crazy. Maybe I'll try that. I'm going to eat a sandwich a little bit later. Maybe I'll try with my knuckles. I, I think I could do all right with that. Nah, we'll find out. I'll let you know. So let's jump back in here. Uh, verse 4. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. 
Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Verse 8, For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. Boom. Jesus always has a great response. And I can imagine him sitting there with just like composure, but with just fire, right? Composed fire coming at them and saying, what? Hypocrites. You hold the traditions of men. You hold this washing of cups and pots and pans and washing your hands above what God's intended plan was. Man, would that hit you? Has that hit you? Have you ever had a moment like that? A moment where someone older than you or wiser than you or another student, a friend, a peer is like, hey, man, you are holding this above the heart of the Lord and his intended purpose. Whoa. I'm sure that hit them. And, if, and maybe it didn't. But it hits me. I'm like, bro, am I holding the traditions of men as more important than the heart of what the Lord is intending? Jeez, let me look at this. You know, it's crazy. And Jesus always, always responded well, perfectly, and always had the right answers. Oh, man, it's crazy. I get, I get like, shocked a lot of times. So, verse 9, he said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your tradition for Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is Corban, that is a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down and many such things you do. Right? Here's just an example of how they twist the words of God. They twist them. They lose sight of them. I, I think that we've had conversations that sometimes we want to fit our lives and fit God's word to make our lives the way we want them. I think Christians do that all the time, me included. right? And we want to grow in that. We want to change that. We want to, to just take it. And, and, and get better at it, but we still fall short. Man, let's not do that. Let's take the word of God as it's intended. And if you don't know what that verse is about, man, Google it. Google is your friend. Search up. Go on to Blue Letter Bible. Go on to Bible Gateway. Go on to all these different things that have answers to questions. Get a commentary. If you don't know the answers, seek the Lord. But then look for scholarly advice too, man. People, there are sermons, there's wisdom out there far greater than, than what I know, right? Far more than what I know. But what I know is that the word of the Lord is jam-packed and has answers to a lot of questions. I was talking to like Matt, Stassi, Stilo, and Stephen, a uh, tall New Zealand guy, a.k.a. my brother-in-law. Uh, I was talking to him and talking to them about what is the intended purpose of the Bible. What are the words of the Bible for? And we just went down this list of like what it's intended for, reproof, correction, all these things. And it just all combines to show you that the word of the Lord, and he has many words that aren't in here, right, is to help us grow, right? We need to grow in our walk with the Lord. We need to learn what is the intended heart of God. Because that's what God is looking at, looking at your heart, looking at my heart. It's not about the strictness. He shows us grace and mercy. And here we go. The Pharisees lost sight. So I have a verse for you, right? 1 Samuel 16, 7. I'm sure you've heard it. But it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, 
Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Man, the Lord looks at the heart. So cool. Guys, the Lord is so wanting your heart. He wants every part of it. That's what he wants to pierce with his words. That's where he wants you to store his words, lay up treasures in heaven, right? His words I have hidden in my heart. Guys, that is what Jesus is so, God is so focused on the heart, right? The Holy Spirit indwells in us. It's about the heart, guys. And the Pharisees missed that. Are you? Ask yourself that. Are you so focused on the rules, the regulations? Are you so focused on being so strict? And, and in this, are you losing the sight of the importance of having a heart for the Lord? It's not just about doing what he says. It's about having passion for it, a desire to do it, a heart for him. Right, that's where we got to grow. That's where we got to shape and change. All right. Uh, verse 14. When he had called all the multitude... To himself, he said to them, hear me, everyone, and understand there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. When he, capital H, had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So he said to them, are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside can def cannot defile him? Because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated thus purifying all foods. Right? It wasn't about the, the dirty hands. It wasn't about the, the clean pots and the pans. It wasn't about that. It was about the entering of the heart. What is in there? Man, it's so interesting, so unique. Are you thus without understanding also? Are you guys seeking that understanding? Ask yourself that question. Are you truly, truly desiring not just to read the Bible like a book, right, but to understand what God is trying to show you, understand what, the, what is being spoken to you, what is shown, shown to you through the word of the Lord, Man, I, I hope my heart is like that. I can't say that it always is, but I can say I, I desire to know that. And what I want to look at, right, now they were talking about actual food. They were talking about in this time the food and, and the way we, they ate and stuff. But I believe that this part of Scripture means so much more, that it's about the other things that, go in, that we intake into our lives that affect what this list is. Our heart, what comes out of a man that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. I don't know about you, but I think that's not a list I would like to associate with. But guess what? We do. We're imperfect. We're sinful people. Now, the Lord redeems us and forgives us. And if we have a thought, right, if we have hate in our heart towards somebody else, Right? If we have a thought, an impure thought about a guy or a girl, man, that is, that is sinful. The Lord says it's adultery of the heart. Guys, there's so much that in our mind we think and we do that is sinful, but the Lord forgives us. And maybe you have to check yourself right now. Maybe you're, you have animosity, hate, you're gossiping, evil speak towards another person. Man, give that up to the Lord. Right? What we're thinking, what we're watching. Man, maybe you're, you're, you're constantly consuming, right? Consuming and consuming and callousing and your, your ears, your heart, your, your eyes with things that aren't good. 
Right? I have definitely been known to do that with the music I listen to, with, with stuff like that. I don't do it well. I'm not perfect, but I'm, I'm trying to grow in that. So it's about what we consume, what we put in our heart. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart. I don't know the exact verse, but guys, murders, thefts, covetousness, guys, it all starts with a thought. It all starts with our heart. It all starts with those things. So what are you consuming? What are you putting in your heart? Because that is what the Lord is concerned with. Not concerned with with the strict legalism of strict stringently attending every church service, of doing, those are good things, right? Being at church is important to our walk with the Lord. Serving is a good thing, but don't let your walk with the Lord become those things because then you'll start to look down on others for not doing them or you'll look down on others or, or look differently at others for not doing them the exact same way that you're doing it. And that is just losing sight of what God's intent and intention is. When you guys go out, when you minister to other people, when you witness to other people, don't look down on them because they behave differently than you do. Build them up. Help them see what truth is and have open conversations with other believers. That's a good thing. We talk about the Lord often on staff because that's just a good conversation to have. And let's say someone's not a Christian, and they want to have a conversation with, them, with you about it, well, don't be so hard-headed, right, about your point being right. Have conversation. Help them see truth. And, and just have the Lord work in your heart and help you build others up. Help, help you point others towards the Lord. And I think there's just so much fruit of that. Be cautious with what you're constantly consuming, right? Be cautious with that. Man, movies are fun to watch. Music is great to listen to, but be careful what you are consuming, what you are watching, what you are listening to, because it can overwhelm you, and you don't even realize it's happening. So when you're witnessing living that life, think about the other people involved in that where they are, what, what you should speak to them. Don't be, as the Pharisees, just hating on them, right? Come to them. Meet them where they're at, the same way Jesus does with us. And then it's about the heart, about your heart, about their heart. Think about what is going into your heart. Think about the thoughts that you're having and ask the Lord for help if they are hard thoughts. Man, I really have liked this series. I think it In the last couple weeks, we've really gone to resting, going to wait on the Lord, listening to that still, small voice, being in his presence. And I think this is a a hybrid of them both, going out and witnessing in a light, but also rest in the Lord, seek him, and seek what he has to show you. So, Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives and in the lives of these students and these parents, and these families. Lord God, we pray our hearts would continue to just knit to yours, that you would take the throne of our lives, that we would be lights to others. We would be gracious and courteous, intentional with how we behave towards others. But Lord, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. In your name we pray, amen. All right. Hey, so remember, this Thursday, it's our last summer beach day until you guys start school again. Such a bummer. But it's been so fun being able to see you hang out. So don't miss out. Last Thursday, 12 to 4, come hang out with us. Uh, We're going to be at Powerhouse Park in Del Mar. And then no more Friday night use. We're done for the summer. But this Saturday at 10 o'clock, from 10 to 1130, on the backfield, we're playing Ultimate Frisbee. We will be socially distancing. Make sure you bring a mask. Bring your water and sunscreen And we're just going to have a great time. If you don't want to play but you want to come hang out, that is okay too. But be here. I'm really excited for it. Excited to see what the Lord is going to continue to do for this youth group 
Anyways, I am seriously hot and sweaty in this place, so I'm going to go stand in the freezer and then get something to eat. So get at us with your perfect candy. Let us know. Really pumped. If you missed Friday Night Youth, you can tune in. It's on YouTube now. And, uh, hey, love you guys. Stoked on you guys. Pumped. Catch you all later. Peace.